need to start with, you want some type of surface that will not absorb the ink. I know some people in the chat are using a sheet of metal, a tile, anything. As long as it's nice and slippery, that's totally fine. And for ink, really, it's like anything goes. I mean, I happen to like this brand. It's called Akua. It's a water-based ink that you can use for intaglio. It's not as stiff as traditional printmaking ink, but I really like it because it doesn't dry very fast. You guys can use oil paint. You can use water mixable oils. You can use acrylic, but it dries a little bit fast. So if you guys want to use acrylic, I would definitely add slow dry medium to that. I know other people are doing soft pastels. I mean, try it. Like I've never used this technique with soft pastels or watercolor, but just let's give it a shot and see what happens. Okay, we're gonna start out with some burnt sienna. And if you guys are using printmaking ink, you do not need very much at all. So be very conservative about the quantity of ink you put down. I just find people get really overzealous about putting down printmaking ink. And so what I just do with a palette knife is I just pull it out like this. And I am going to be using a brayer like this, or you can use a small one like this. It doesn't matter what size you guys have. But let me tell you, you don't have to have a brayer. And I'll show you guys later, however you can get ink here is fine. <laughs> like if you guys want to paint the ink on, if you want to slap it on with a palette knife, it's totally up to you. I'm going to show you two ways. The traditional way to do it is with a brayer like this. But again, if you don't have a brayer or if you don't have printmaking ink, it's not a big deal, you guys. Okay. Another cool thing about this technique is you don't even have to roll the plate evenly. Does everybody see this? Like I could totally just do it like this. And so I'm going to show you guys what it looks like when it's even first. But later on, I'll show you guys that this is like caveman printmaking. <laughs> like you cannot mess this up. The only thing that will mess it up is if you didn't use plexiglass and you try to do this on paper, that would not work out very well. Or if your ink dries too fast, that's not gonna work, but everything else, it's like whatever works for you. All right, so this is very thin. Just be real conservative. You do not need a lot of ink for this. And here comes the fun part. Does everybody see this? Basically anything you can get your hands on that can press into the paper, you can use. It doesn't even have to make a mark. Like, see this? <laughs> this is a back scratcher. I was like, oh, this would be really fun for making some marks. And I have a chisel here because I thought this would be fun to get these strokes. Even something like an eraser that's soft can make a mark or something like a rock. Some people like ballpoint pen, pencils really great. And so every single one of these tools they're going to make a different type of mark. And really, this technique, it's not about making finished work. It's about experimenting. It's about sketching. It's a nice change of pace, actually, from the long-term painting, paint-alongs that we've been doing. So I think you guys are going to have a lot of fun. You're going to make a lot of work today. And so that's why I would recommend, if you guys have, like, a pad of paper, I would get that. Like, we're not going to do one print. We're probably going to do, like, 20. So it's going to be a lot of prints. Okay, now what you guys want to do, you're going to take the paper and you're going to put it down like this. And you want to make sure that it lines up with the top because you do have to tape this down. I mean, it's not the end of the world if you don't, but it's easier because then you make sure your paper is not sliding around like that. So you have a couple of questions about materials. Trina says, would acrylic be okay? Acrylic would be fine, but I would add some slow dry medium because sometimes it dries so fast that you just aren't able to do that. And Nikolai is asking, is this the same technique you used as the print that's on your Etsy shop? I don't know what print you're referencing, but I don't have any trace monotypes in my Etsy shop. It is a monotype 
but this is a very particular type of monotype. I'll explain to you guys all the nerdy printmaking stuff, which is basically that a monotype is a print that you cannot reproduce. You can only make it once. And it's a very strange type of printmaking technique because the whole definition of a print is that you can reproduce it. But the thing about a monotype is once I pull this print, that's it. I can't continue to work on it. Again, I can't reproduce it. And so it's very strange. Walber is asking, can you do it with gouache? I've never done it with gouache before. You guys could try. The important thing is that whatever material you use for painting, it has to be something that's activated. Like it would have to be gouache that's not dry. If the gouache is dry, that's not gonna work very well. You guys can also use like the back of a brush like that. And what I'm doing right now, I'm not trying to draw anything. I'm just making marks because I just want you guys to see what this looks like. And honestly, I could just do that all day. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, let's see what the rock does. I have no idea. And it does help to put a lot of pressure because the more pressure you guys put on this, the more you're going to see that. So let's put the eraser down. And I do want to show you guys, there's a big difference between the pencil. So let's do the pencil down here at the bottom. I pressed pretty hard there. Let me do one that's a little lighter. And then the ballpoint pen is a whole other story like that. And let's just try the reed pen. Just see how that looks. Oh, and if you guys have sculpture tools, if you guys look at this, it has like a little wire on it. So this is sort of like a mini fork. A fork is great. If you guys have a fork, <clears throat> definitely use that. Or you could even use like the side of a ruler, something like this. It is tricky because you can't really see what you're doing that well, but this is totally about playing around with marks. It's not about predictable results. And I know a lot of people say to me, oh, well, I'm so frustrated because my painting didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. With a technique like this, you just give up. You're like, oh, I will never know <laughs> what this is gonna look like. And for some people, that's actually very refreshing because then you can really give yourself into the material, not worry about stuff like that. And you could even use the back of a brush. Let's just try that and see what that looks like. Okay, you guys ready? <laughs> I love this. This is the fun thing about print making is there is this like aha moment, which is really satisfying. Okay, ready? Look at that. That's so cool. Okay, awesome. Now, I think for me, I probably pressed a little bit too hard when I put the paper on the surface. So that's why this is like super ultra grainy. So what I'm going to do for the next one is I'm going to roll it again, but I'm going to put even less ink. I think I put too much ink on that last one. So let's try that again. Okay, this is really cool. Let's see. Gargi is saying, can we use some other surface other than plexiglass? Yes, you can. As long as it's a surface that does not absorb. So like you wouldn't want to do this on paper. You wouldn't want to do it on cloth, but you could do it on a sheet of metal. You could do it on a piece of plastic that's not plexiglass. You could do it on a ceramic tile. As long as the ink stays on the surface, you're fine. Yeah, so I put way too much ink on that last one. And I think I also put too much pressure. Like when I put the paper on, I think I pressed down a little too hard. So I think probably for a lot of you guys, you'll make that first mistake, which is too much ink. And that's a common printmaking issue is the quantity of ink you put down really does make a difference. So this time, what I did is I put the paper down, but I, I just like put it on. I didn't press it on. I think last time I wasn't thinking so carefully and I ended up doing that instead. All right. And I believe we had a question up here. 
Slutnir saying, what's the difference between monotype and monoprint? And we got a printmaker in here. <laughs> Tarina says, monotype is a typeface that has equal spacing between each letter, while monoprint is a print you can only do once. Oh, really? I always thought it was monotype is a one-time thing, which is what we have here. But monoprint is something like if you had, actually, I have some of them here. <laughs> I can show you guys. I just whipped out my big printmaking box. Hang on a second. Well, this is a blank plate. But so if I etched into this with an etching needle, this becomes a dry point. But then if I printed it and like painted on it with a brush, that becomes a mono print. That, that's what I was always told. I could be wrong. I mean, I'll tell you guys, I have mega imposter syndrome when it comes to printmaking. I just, I don't know. There's a lot of like hardcore printmaking people out there. And they always make me feel really inferior because they always have some like really complicated process and I don't understand it. So like, I just don't think about myself as a like really good printmaker. I mean, I'm okay. I don't think I'm terrible, but I'm also not great either. So yeah, I mean, that's what I get basically for being a jack of all trades is that I'm not a master at anything. And I think I saw a comment earlier. Somebody was saying that, oh, basically you're drawing blind. You are, but I am sitting near a window and I'm pressing hard enough. <clears throat> you guys can't see it in the video, but I can see the lines that I'm making. I mean, obviously it's not the same thing as like really seeing the lines, but it's definitely not a hundred percent blind. Okay, let me grab, let's do a pencil mark up there. Let's do stuff up there. And maybe the sculpture tool will help me a little bit. So yeah, like I'm pressing so hard here that it almost looks like an embossing. Dara is asking, is there any sort of spacer between the paper and the ink? Nope, it's just paper right on top. Just don't do what I did, which is that I press down with the paper. And so I, I don't mind the grain. It's just for me, there's too much grain. So I wasn't able to get the contrast I was looking for. So it's important, you guys, with this technique, you're going to do a lot. You're not going to just do it once and then walk away. Neftali is asking, how much pressure is needed? That's up to you. I mean, you guys should play with that because depending on how hard you press, you can get really different values. Like sometimes you can make it really light and beautiful. So if anything, I would say, you guys, you want to play with the pressure, like try all kinds of things. Okay, you ready? Hang on, let me just remove this comment. Ah, okay, that's a lot better. Does everybody see how with this print, there is the grain? but it's not like this one, okay? Now, some of you guys might want this. You might want something that's a little bit more heavy handed, but this is really fun to look at. In fact, let me just take a minute. Let me zoom in so you guys can like really see what's going on with the marks. And I'll just move this around. Let me just change the focus. Okay, so if you guys take a look at this, does everybody see this is the ballpoint pen? This is like a really crisp line. Now, if you look at this, this is more like the sculpture tool and you can see it's a wider stroke and it's a lot fuzzier. And then this is that back scratcher that I was talking about. This, I think, maybe that was my metal sculpture tool. I think this might've been this stroke. And then this in the middle, I believe these super broad strokes was the ruler. And so those are like really, really broad, okay? And I happen to like this like patchy grain and quality. I think it's very beautiful. This is not a technique that is meant to be neat. <laughs> so anybody here who really feels like they want something to look nice and clean, that this is not the technique for you. This is for playing around. Look at how cool this is. Sketch Pause 5 is catching us live for the first time. That's very exciting. Tell me in the chat, is this your first time live? I just love what you guys 
are telling me about the experiences here. Ava Girl says, I get the feeling I'm going to be fighting with my quote paint. You know what? You don't have to. I think the whole thing about this particular technique, you have to just give in. <laughs> like you guys can't try to have any element of control. You just not. And so you just have to be cool with that because if you guys want predictable results, this is not it. This is totally not the technique. Okay, what I'm gonna try this time, just to show you guys the range, I'm gonna add more ink, but this time I'm gonna mess it up with my brush. So let me show you guys what I mean by that. I mean, I'm so excited to see what you guys make because the results are so different every single time. They never come out the same. It depends on the material you're using. So one thing you guys can do, those of you guys who are painters, like if you really want to play with this, you could paint into this like that. It's not going to pick this up perfectly. I mean, if you guys wanted this to pick up, you would have to go to like a print shop and use a professional print studio. But this is sort of fun because it's like putting a texture onto the surface that's different. And you guys will find the grain is not going to be the same. It's going to be quite different. This is such a great technique when you want to just play time. <laughs> like somebody said the other day, actually it was last night, we had this stream, me, Deep D and Alex did a stream on prompts for self-taught artists. And we had a couple of prompts that were just, okay, make some marks. And somebody said, oh, this looks like something a toddler would do. I'm like, that's awesome. I would love to do that. Okay, so this one, in fact, let's do that exercise. Let's do the line exercise, making different types of lines. So I'm just gonna do one here with the palette knife. Let's grab some of my other tools. Let's see. Okay. Again, I'm still just gonna make marks because I want you guys to see what the differences are in terms of how you actually apply the paint to the plexiglass or whatever surface you guys are using. I like this tool. This is my sculpture tool. It's really fun to just, and you guys can try different things. Like, let's do this. Let's start really light, get very dark, and get really light again. And you guys will see some of that will pick up. Not all of it, but a lot of it will. Let's do the same thing with this one. So I'm going to start real light, go hard, go light again. And let's do the same thing with the ballpoint pen. So very, very light, hard, light again. Okay, and I just love this back scratcher. <laughs> Actually, what's really fun, if you guys have like a plastic knife that's serrated, that's really fun. Or if you guys have a plastic fork, that's also really cool as well. All right, let's see how this looked. Remember, this is the surface I painted some texture. Yeah. Oh, that is really cool. Okay, let me zoom in. You guys have to see how freaking cool this is. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit more. Let's change the focus to make sure you guys can really see. Okay, does everybody see here? You can see the brush stroke going through that mark. So my mark did this, but you can see the brush stroke going up and down and here too, here too as well. And this is all fuzzy. So it's like, this is where I removed a lot of the paint. And this is also another section. Like, do you guys see how this is going up and down, but then you can see the brush doing that? Or here you can see the brush going up and down. I know you guys can't see it that well, but I'll post close-ups in the Discord after the stream so you guys can see exactly what that looks like. Elizabeth is saying, what would the name of this be? I put paint on ink on a plastic bag protector and use similar tools. I then press the paint down on my surface. It's monotype. That's pretty much what it is. I mean, you guys could just blob paint here, stick a piece of paper, take it. That's a monotype. <laughs> that's pretty much what it is. And this actually, this is a great reference book. 
if any of you guys are interested in printmaking, this is like the Bible for printmakers. And honestly, if I had the time, I would myself produce like a video Bible <laughs> of printmaking. It's just, as you guys know, it's expensive to do all that stuff. And I'm only one person. But this book is really good because they cover pretty much everything. And they cover lithography and etching and registration and aquatint. And they have a lot of images of different prints. So if you guys want to get a resource for printmaking, this is it. Because at this point, there is not a lot of good printmaking stuff online in terms of videos. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe one of you guys here has seen some really good printmaking videos online, but there are not very many. And I have not found a resource <clears throat> that I thought was really reliable. Or it's a lot of the exact same thing. It's like, why can we only press dried flowers into jelly plates? I'm like, there are other things. <laughs> like, that's not the only option for what we're looking at. Nihal says, when I accidentally use too much ink, I put paper on painted surface repeatedly until the excess paint is removed, which won't be a waste because I use the grain design as a background for other studies. That's great. Fantastic. Add a girl is saying it's drawing too fast. Okay, I don't know what you're using, but again, for those of you guys, if you want to use acrylic, you really have to use slow dry medium. It just drives too fast. Wow, this is the first time live for Amen X. That's so wonderful. Greetings from Turkey. Well, welcome, welcome. Castle says printmaking is such a unique process. I just really love drawing with you guys in my sketchbook. I can go in there and get very detailed. Also printmaking, I sometimes do that too, and I got lost in it. Oh, I love printmaking, you guys. It's just oh, it's so incredibly satisfying. It's like that moment where you go, <laughs> it's like so cool. <laughs> John Murph says, can you use different colors on the glass? Would it still be called a monotype? Yep, anything <laughs> that you guys put on this whatever colors you want it's a monotype a monotype is the most simple printmaking technique there is you don't need a printmaking press it's really awesome we do have some printmaking tutorials so some of you guys may have seen i did this jelly plate printmaking tutorial we also have one with lauren where she shows you guys how to carve rubber stamps and I also have a tutorial on linoleum block prints. So we have a few printmaking tutorials, not as many as I would like us to have. But yeah, it's it's hard because printmaking is just not, it's just not a well-known art form. It's just compared to the number of people that do say painting, it's it's tiny. It's a fraction of that population. And by the way, tell me in the chat, who here has printmaking experience? And if you do, tell me what you've done. Have you done litho, etching? What have you done? And for those of you guys, this is your first time doing printmaking, tell me too. Because I'm just curious to hear from you guys who has done this and who has not. Super fun. Okay. I'm just going to do flat like this for now. We can definitely have more playtime, <laughs> but I just want to do this for the beginning when I actually do an image for you guys to look at. Let's see. Neftali says, mostly seen videos on the jelly plate as well as alternatives like plastic bags. Oh, there's so many on jelly plates. I think that's just the accessibility of the material. It's so much easier. I mean, who's going to do a litho video? That's like such a pain in the butt. You really need something that is full out professional print shop. It's such a pain in the butt. Nora says, I've done mono printing linoleum. And Glossia says, I've done linos, woodcuts, jelly, and giant mono prints. And Emil says, I did linoleum prints after watching an art prof tutorial. I really am addicted to printmaking now. Oh, it's so addictive. Isn't it? It's it's so good. All right. I'm going to now put on a sheet of paper. We're going to draw. Okay. I'm just going to do a pencil drawing. I'm not going to get all crazy with tools just so you guys can see what that looks like. And then after I've done a couple of pencil sketches or maybe one or two, I'll get a little bit wackier <laughs> with my tools. I'm so curious to see what you guys make because we've been doing 
paint alongs, draw alongs, where we're really doing like a finished piece and working on it for a long time. And this is so totally different. Okay, I'm gonna start with the reference photo that's in my lower left corner. And if you guys want to draw along with me, you're welcome to, you don't have to, you can just make marks. I mean, that's a perfectly good way to spend your afternoon. But if you guys want to use the same photos, the links to the reference photos, they're in the YouTube video description below. We're gonna draw a sheep because I was so excited about these sheep, you guys. Oh my God, because I think, what was it? I was, let me zoom in a little bit. We were walking around in the mountains because that's what you do when you live in Utah. And all of a sudden, I'm not kidding, like we saw this huge herd of sheep. And we were like, oh my God, where is this coming from? Because the shepherd wasn't there. Usually when you see sheep, there's so many of them. But it was just this crowd and we're like, oh my God, they're lost. <laughs> Which made me really sad. But they were so cool looking, oh my God. And so I freaked. I was like, oh my God, I have to film this. So I took up my DSLR and I filmed some video footage and just took all these pictures of them. I mean, they were scared of us. They did not want to be near us at all. But, oh my God, such cool photos. I mean, some of them have blood on them, which is a little bit not so fun to look at, but I, I was so excited about taking these photos. It was just the coolest thing. You run into so many wacky animal things <laughs> in Utah. They're just, what are they called again? Pronghorn. We saw a whole thing of pronghorn when we went mushroom hunting, which by the way, if you guys haven't seen my mushroom hunting tutorial, you should just for the mushroom hunting part. I mean, the painting parts too, but oh my God, the mushroom picking is so satisfying. It's just like the coolest thing. So you guys will notice I'm not really like pressing my hand across the paper because again, if I do that, which you guys might want, but you're going to get a darker green. So for this first one, I'm not going to do that, but you guys can do it however you want. Okay. So this is just a quick pass. This is not me really thinking about pressure. I'm just mapping out the image. And then once the image is a little bit more solid, I'll go in and I'll get harsher so I can create more contrast with the image. And again, you guys don't have expectations. This is great. I mean, if you guys are one of those artists and that's like everybody, <laughs> basically, if you're somebody and you struggle with like, feeling like your work has to be perfect or you're afraid to get started because you're worried about, oh no, what if it doesn't turn out good? This is such a good technique because you just give up. You're like, yep, can't control it. Let's just see what happens. It's kind of a nice thing. All right, I just wanna get this leg looking a little bit more sturdy. They have such cute little tails. Aren't those adorable? And I love how muscular this leg is. I get more specific about this. I'm just going to focus on these two sheep and maybe later on I'll add some of the bigger ones. Hey, Rubia, looks like we've got a printmaker here with us. Very cool. And RB Dick says, this is my first time to learn this and it's new to me and I'd love to learn it. Very cool. No, I did not say screen printing with blood tear. <laughs> horrible oh my god no no i'm saying in, in some of the photos you can see there's like blood on some of the sheep it's a little bit yucky but anyway <laughs> rubia says so exciting you're having a stream on prints please do more linoleum carving bring lauren to carve more stamps more and more oh yeah i want to you guys i really do the thing about printmaking is that a lot of the techniques are not fast so it's tricky to do a live stream. I just figured we'd start with this and let's see what happens. Awesome, so excited. Okay, I wanna add a little bit more of an indication of some of the darker values. Cause I think what I like about the sheep and I'm pressing down hard now, I think what I like about the sheep is 
their texture. So I'm going to do these very like scribbly marks today. I'm so glad I'm drawing today. I was like getting grouchy yesterday because I'm like, oh man, I've not drawn in so long. Yeah, it was not so fun. So I, I just love my weekend starting this way. It's like really satisfying to just wake up, do a draw along, have my coffee. It's a, just a nice way to start the weekend, I think. Okay. And remember, once you guys pull it, uh, well, here's the thing though. You could, I guess you can just like pull it up and see what's going on. So actually, let me do, oh, wait, but then I can't really show you guys because the camera's not there. Okay, sorry about that. All right, maybe I'll do that next time is adjust the camera so you guys can see a little bit better. You guys can do this however you want. I tend to like doing the darker strokes first just because that's how my brain works. But whatever you guys want to do, that's totally fine. I want to give a shout out to RB Dick. Thank you so much for the super sticker. We greatly appreciate your support. If you guys did not know this, Art Prof relies entirely on donations to stay up and running. And we need to keep, I think, Art Prof 100% free. So support us on Patreon or make a one time donation. The links are in the video description below because we want to make sure that we never ever well i i don't think we will because i'll shut it down I, i'm not going to shut it down i'm just saying i'd rather shut it down than charge money i don't want to charge money i refuse it's not a great business plan because then you have no revenue stream and you're giving out free content <laughs> so it's like it doesn't really work because i have a lot of people I'm like how do you make money i'm like we don't <laughs> we don't make money we we just put our stuff out there and we have a great time, but it, we do need your support. We need any contributions you guys can make. Huge difference for us. So we're able to get what we need to keep things up and running. Let me just change the focus. I want to make sure now that I've drawn a little bit that that is correct. All right. It's refreshing to do these long pieces. Like I was mentioned earlier that we have come off a bunch of longer term streams where we're painting and you know the painting takes like four streams it's time consuming i mean i like those but it, it's nice to shake it up for example i think sometimes you can feel a little stuck when you're looking at something for a long time but doing something like this is really liberating who's having fun tell me in the chat are you guys having fun with this if you're not, you're doing something wrong because this is so fun. Oh my God, I could do this all day. And I'm also gonna add the grass. Oh, that's really cool texture. Yeah, why didn't I draw the grass? That was stupid. I should have done that earlier. You know, earlier this morning, I'm a news junkie. So usually I'm like, New York Times. <laughs> and for once the news isn't horrible. Well, I mean, it's not great, but it could be worse, unfortunately. But I got up this morning and for some reason, I like really wanted to read Calvin and Hobbes. I don't know, it was so random. I mean, I own all the Calvin and Hobbes books. I grew up with Calvin and Hobbes. Tell me you guys, who here reads Calvin and Hobbes? It's like, to me, one of the all time greatest comics of all time. Tell me if you like it, but I was reading, if you guys haven't seen, it's the 10th anniversary book. And I love that book because in addition to having the comics, Bill Watterson, he also writes all this commentary about comics and about his process. And I, I just really loved reading all that stuff. So that was super fun to start my day. Like I was like, dude, I need to do this more. I need to read more. But oh, sometimes I don't think about it. Tempted to, I don't really want to take it off though. I'm just going to take a little peek. Oh, I can show you guys a little bit of the peek. Okay, ready? Let, let's see if I can do this without like losing it. Okay, it's pretty dark. I think maybe I have too much ink. Again, it's so hard to not have too much ink. That is difficult. That is the classic printmaking issue is how much ink is on your plate makes a really big difference. 
oh my god and those of you guys who are printmakers you know when you're printing an edition and you're just like oh my god let me die now so if you guys don't know what an edition is that's basically a series of prints that are all exactly the same so if you have a ser an edition of five that means all five prints are exactly the same and it's sometimes printmakers have like limited editions where it's like oh well this plate has been printed 25 times and some people will actually cut the plate so, so that way it's so dramatic so that way nobody will like steal it i mean i guess i would do that too uh let's see yeah you know i'm gonna add let's just do that i i just want to see what it looks like Naftali says, how come you're not laying your hand on the paper? I'm not because if you guys remember the first one I did here, the grain was really dark because I pressed too hard. And I mean, it was also because I had too much ink. That wasn't just it. But I do think the less I can like press my hand on the paper, the less likely I'm going to get marks where I don't want them. Triina says, is the stone expensive and what type of stone is normally used? Oh, I guess you guys are having like a lithography <laughs> discussion in here. <laughs> That's cool. I'm not even going to get into lithography, but yeah, lithography, you can use an aluminum plate. You can use a stone. The stones are kind of a big deal because there's not that many quarries that carry that particular, I think it's limestone. It's been a long time since I've done lithography. Okay, let's see. Whoa, that's still too dark. I don't like how dark that is. I mean, it's cool, but it's a little bit fuzzy. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna roll out the ink again, and I'm gonna do some brushing so that way it's not so dark. Yeah, let's try that. But isn't that fun, you guys, to just flip it? I mean, I've already done a whole bunch. Okay, so this time, or we could actually go, well, I mean, you could, in theory, put another sheet and do it again. I mean, sometimes that's really fun. But I'm going to just roll this out. And this time, I'm going to do the brush thing. So I'm going to take the brush that I had. In fact, I might just, like, paint this sort of in the direction of the grass. That might be kind of a fun thing. I mean, that's another reason why I like the Akua is that the Akua, you can roll it really thin. The speedball paints, they're okay, but they're, they're a little bit blobby. I mean, I suppose if you like really work at it, you could, but it's hard. It's tricky because when you hand print, it's not the same thing as when you print on a professional press. Like when I taught relief projects at RISD, which was all like woodcut and all that stuff, I actually really had a lot of issues trying to get students to get like the right amount because like oftentimes the issue with the press is that the pressure is so much that people put way too much ink on it. This is the opposite thing where it's like sometimes not enough lifts, but as you can see, I did the other thing. So it like doesn't really matter. <laughs> Seven Angelic says, do you ever get brayer marks in your ink from the edge of the brayer? Any tips on avoiding that? I mean, what you can do, this brayer is not great. It's a little bit uneven. I feel like this one might be better. I mean, it depends. There's so many different types of brayers. You have to try the ones that you like, but here's one action that's very helpful, Seven Angelic. So a lot of people do this, okay, right? And that's fine. For what I'm doing, it doesn't matter. But if I were printing a relief print, I would do it like this, up and down, up and down, like that. So do you guys see how this rolls? It, it just gets a lot more even. But really, it's like you got to roll, 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 roll in different directions. I mean, I've <laughs> had prints where I'm just like doing that forever and ever and ever. It, it really is a craft. And it's hard if you don't have a ton of printmaking experience to get that to work, it, it really depends on the person. Maria Bell says, I always feel like a non-artist invading an artist space because I have no experience in anything art. Still fun to watch that. You know what, Maria Bell? I find that honestly to be the biggest compliment because if somebody who does not practice art, like the making part of it, 
but they still find what I have to say and show interesting, that's amazing. Because usually it is only artists who are really going to be doing it. But I've had some people, like especially our travel tutorials, where I went to Taiwan or Utah or something, I've had a lot of people say to me, like, yeah, I, I love your videos and I'm not an artist. And I'm like, whoa, that's really, really cool. Okay, let me go to the other photo, which is on the, the top, which is them running away from me. They were really upset, <laughs> I think. Okay. <laughs> W315 says, my brayer's a little stuck and doesn't roll smoothly. Should I replace it? Not necessarily, because it depends on the ink. Like what I'm using right now, this brayer, what I'm rolling is so thin that this brayer isn't great. I feel like I like this one better. But the thing is, if I was using a thicker ink, this one might be fine. So my feeling about brayer, just keep them. I mean, some of them get really crappy, though. I mean, you have to clean them. If you don't clean them well, they die pretty fast. Yeah, like Karen says, just grab some stuff on the fly and trying some marks. Just have fun, you guys. Like, there's too much emphasis, I think, on people being, and what does that mean? Perfect? As I don't know what that means. It doesn't mean anything. So just play time, okay? <laughs> play time. That's what we're doing. Okay. I guess this is like the sheep butt image. <laughs> Let's see how we're gonna get started. So again, like really quick light sketch. And again, that grain that I've been talking about, you guys, you, you might love it. You might like that grain to be very dark. I just thought it was a little bit of overkill. Um, man, this is like sheep butt bonanza. <laughs> They're so funny looking. Actually, you guys, you know it was even cooler? This might have actually been earlier in the day, and I wonder if actually it was the same herd, but we saw a huge, like, you know, like the biggest herd of sheep I'd ever seen in my life, and there were so many that we couldn't drive down the road. Like, we actually had to, like, pull over and let the sheep get ahead of us because ugh, we could not drive on that road. I'm gonna make these ones in the back like really gestural. So they're sort of like running upwards. Sort of like that, that motion. That's sort of fun. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. Make sure you guys can really see that better. And I'm gonna do a little bit of atmospheric perspective. So I'm gonna like really emphasize this sheet butt. <laughs> Press down really hard. I'm gonna get some high contrast in this area. So this sheep I'm doing in the front is going to be really dark and pronounced. Ooh, and I love these shadows. Aren't these shadows gorgeous? The way that they weave into the grass. So I'm gonna really push that. Yeah, in fact, let's just do some patches of that shadow in here. I hope you guys are feeling very free with this technique and that you're loosening up. Like who here, tell me in the chat, who here feels more liberated by this? Because you can't really see what you're doing. Tell us you guys if that's helping you. Cause I know a lot of people struggle with that. We were talking about that yesterday, how some people really feel like, oh man, my stuff has to be perfect. and it intimidates me and I, I don't know what to do. This is a really good technique for just getting yourself out of that a lot more. Because I, I get it, you guys. I mean, that's really common for people to have that feeling. And you know what? I don't care if this doesn't look like sheep. I don't. The, the sheep are just a loose reference to get me going, I could care less about the recognition factor. And that's up to you. I mean, if you guys wanna draw something that's more recognizable, that's fine. But I'm just explaining that that's, that's my process today, just messing around like crazy. A.M. 
Nokalainen says, I've started to experiment with a pen and brush duct tape to a handle of <laughs> sorrow. Oh, wow, that's really cool. I love that. Triina says, it's so fun and messy, brings me back to childhood. Naftali says, it's so much fun. Cool. Yeah. Karen says, playtime. Beth is asking, I missed the beginning. Is that an oil-based ink? This is a water-based ink. It's a Kua. You can use oil-based ink. I mean, you guys could even use oil paint or water mixable oils. I mean, the issue with using oils is the oils will eat into the drawing. So if you want something that's going to last 500 years, you can't use that. But I mean, you guys, do I need this to last 500 years? No, it's fine. This is just playtime. BJA says, so can you do multiple layers of ink? If you let the first pass dry, clean the ink off the plate, use another color. I don't know much about printing. Oh yeah, absolutely. So if I do this and I decide, oh, I want to do another color, just go wash it off, dry it off with a paper towel, roll another thing of ink. I mean, I could even go back and do another drawing on the same one without cleaning it. It's it's totally up to you guys. And you can do different colors too. I mean, you can totally like mix all this up. You could put like green on it. I mean, there's no end of what you guys can do here. And Seven Angelic is asking, do you use softer or harder brayers depending on the surface or for some other reason? I think for me, it's a matter of feel. I think, I don't tend to like the rubber ones that much, but see, the thing is, it depends on what you're doing. Because if you're printing like a big ass relief, like you have like giant rollers for that and it depends. So yeah, it's it's not easy to explain, but a lot of it's just like, does it feel good? And really how it feels is just experience. You guys just have to see what that's like. And Lisa says acrylic dried too fast, even with an extender, I'm switching to watercolor. You have to use a lot of extender. It's not a minor amount. Yeah. What? Alicia says my mom's name is like, oh my God, you should like buy her. I'm like a cool thing. That's, that's hilarious. Oh my God. I just love that. <laughs> okay. Awesome. All right. Let's finish up some of these sheep. I mean, here's the thing. I'm not drawing the same way that I would draw if I was printing. Like I, I sort of have given up on a lot of things that I normally stress about. So I, I love this technique for that reason. It's just like, oh, fun, just play. And you know what? We need our playtime. Who here thinks artists need playtime? I think we do. I think we almost need the playtime more than the finish time because the playtime is what really, I think, keeps you fresh, keeps you thinking about different options, I oftentimes think that if you don't have that play time, you, you get very uptight. You tend to start doing everything the same way. So it's it's hard. I don't think it's the easiest thing to deny that from yourself. So who here, who here is earning their play time right now? <laughs> Tell me in the chat. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit more on the grass. I'm going to try to do these like staccato strokes like this because I just, I just want to see how they come out. I'm going to do some here that are like really light. Flip this up. Oh, good. This is way lighter. Okay, awesome. That's exactly what I wanted. All right. I really like spastic strokes. I mean, I feel like I'm having more fun <laughs> doing the grass than I am doing the sheep. It's really, really cool. Let's really build up these strokes. Tom G, thank you so much for the super chat. We greatly appreciate your contribution. Tom says monotype mania today. Love it. Yeah, I know, Tom, because you've been on a roll with those jelly plates <laughs> because in the Discord, I've been seeing all of the experiments. And this is really different than the jelly plates because this is closer to drawing. Like the jelly plates to me, if you guys have used those before, those to me are more like painting because the plate is so soft and mushy. It's, it's really fun, but it's not the same thing. Like this really is such a nice combination of drawing and monotypes. Let me build up. I feel like I lost some of these sheep. 
in the front. Actually, this pencil's dying a little bit. Let me grab another one. Okay, here we go. I want to just give these sheep a little bit more texture because I think they need that. These sheep were so cute. Oh, you guys, I, I freaked when I saw these sheep. I was just, oh my God. I mean, you guys know what I'm like when I get excited. I flip out. Like <laughs> My husband was like, what's your problem? I'm like, it's cheap. Oh my God, there's all these sheep. <laughs> I felt so bad for them. Like, what happened to them? Like, like, did people report lost sheep herds? Like, I can't imagine that it's okay for them. Maybe we should have. I don't know. I don't know how this stuff works. But yeah, it's... This is why I take my own reference photos, because you, you get a good story out of it, right? It's like, I could Google sheep. I don't really want to, because this is so much better. Plus, my pictures are high res. <laughs> yeah, and if you guys didn't know, that this is from our free Flickr page, free high resolution references. So if anybody wants to go check that out, I was so proud of my squirrel photos. Oh, my God. Those squirrels, they're really hard to photograph because they run so fast. They're scared of people. But I happened to have my telezoom lens that day. And I got pretty close to the squirrel. I mean, I, I shot like 500 photos and got like seven that looked good. But that was like really, really cool. OK, so up here where I'm getting further away, I'm going to add that texture, but I'm going to make the sheep lighter and lighter until they like disappear. In fact, I'm going to add this one up here at the top and maybe just a little bit of background stuff. Oh, and this one, I'm really going to like build that shadow and make it more visible. Thank you so much to Frig. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know how to say that name for the super sticker. We greatly appreciate your contribution. It helps us keep our prop 100% free. Adeloche says, I hope those sheep are okay. It's winter after all. Actually, I shot these photos in the fall, so it was pretty warm when I saw them, so they're okay. And C. Cantrell says, I'm earning playtime by doing homework. Awesome. And Maru says, I am. Adeloche says, unless it's a commission, it should always be fun time. Well, I think it's a little different when you're doing a longer term painting or something like that, because it can be. But I feel like when I do something that's a lot longer term, it can definitely put me in a different mindset because my feeling is, that, oh, well, I want to get stuff done here. And this I'm like, I don't care. Let's just play with this. I think I lost a lot of the sheep legs. Let's give them more legs. But I mean, eventually this is so, I don't know. I love doing scribbly drawings like this. Let me see just really briefly how that's coming out. Ooh, awesome. All right, let's just see. I'm so impatient. Like I just need to see what's going on. Okay, let's take that off see how those sheep did. Let me just take away this comment. That's kind of cool. I'm sort of into that. Let me zoom in so you guys can see. There's a lot of texture in here that I did with the brush. You probably can't see that well. Let me just autofocus again. OK, so if you guys look carefully, and I'll show you on the Discord, you can see the brush strokes going up. And I do like how this sheep head is more suggested. And actually, that sheep butt is pretty tonal. This one, though, is almost painterly. And I do like how these get like grainier and grainier. Let me zoom out again so you guys can see the whole page like that. So this is more what we're looking at. Isn't that cool? Oh my God, <laughs> this is just so much fun. I just love this. 
Bicycle Lady says, thanks for allowing access for the great red squirrel photos. I'm just really proud of my squirrel photos. I was like, oh my God. Like, I don't think I'm that great of a photographer, but I was like very proud that they were like high resolution. So yeah, go check out the Flickr page. If you guys need the link, it's in the YouTube video description below, but you gotta scroll down. It's like more down towards the bottom. Yeah, so Triana says, concentrating on artwork detail is my fun time. Everybody's a different version. You know, for some people, they like that meditative, very slow. I mean, for me, that's like cross hatching, which is really cool. So let me show you guys the development because I think that's important. And in fact, what I try to do with my prints is I like to order them. I like to write down which one I did first. So let me do that actually. Because, I mean, if this were an intaglio print, I, they're called states in printmaking. This is not states because they're monotypes, but let me just number these and I'll show you guys how they develop because that's really, really fun. So we have one here, two, three, four, and five. Okay, now I remember, I think it was Tom G who was asking how to sign prints. So what you guys want to do, I mean, I wrote this big five here, but <laughs> if I were to sign this in printmaking, you do AP on the left. AP stands for artist proof. Artist proof means there's only one, okay? Now, if I had an addition, I would do like one of five, two of five, three of five. So the five means it's an addition of five and it's print number one, two, and three. So if you have an addition, that's what you would do. But I don't, this is an artist print, okay? So if I wanna write the title in the middle, let's just call it Sheep Bonanza, <laughs> like that. And then usually signature is here and then date is here. So that's technically, let me zoom in so you guys can see that a little bit better. So that's how you would, let's just get rid of that five. Temporarily you would have AP for artist proof, title, signature, and then year. That's how you sign it. And if it's a drawing, it doesn't matter, but because it's a print, in printmaking, there is like an expectation that if you go to like a print fair and you see prints, people are gonna be looking for that, gonna be looking for the signature, for the date and all of that stuff. Okay, so let's go back and review. Okay, so that was my, oh no, that wasn't the first one. Oh, I guess they're like totally not numbered correctly. Okay, <laughs> let's just redo that, okay. I mean, these are not precious pieces. So one, two, and three, four, and five. Okay, let's see. Okay, so that was my first print, which was way, way too dark because I put too much ink on and I put too much pressure. And so this next one was a lot better because I made the ink much, much thinner. And then this one was where I rolled out thin ink, but I also painted on the surface with a brush. And then this was the first sheep drawing that I did, but again, too much ink. I mean, I think the majority of the time when people have issues with the amount of ink, it's usually too much. It's sort of rare that I see people not doing enough, although it depends, depends on if it's on a press or if it's hand printed. Okay, and then I have the second one with the sheep. So does everybody see the difference? Like this one's more even. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little self-crit, okay? Let everybody do a self-crit because this does not happen all the time. Now, if I look at this one, what I don't like about it is there's no depth between the two sheep. Does everybody see the sheep are drawn the same way, the same darkness, okay? And a lot of the value, how dark something is, is all the same. Like this is the same, that's the same, that's the same. And also similar thing happened with the grass as well. So that's why I don't like that one. Now this one, first of all, I had less ink. So that really helped me a lot. But also, do you guys see how the very light strokes show up? And then we have the brush moving in the same direction as the grass. And then this one's very articulated. This one's more suggested. And as they get further back into space, there's less and less detail and they're lighter. So from an atmospheric perspective point of view, I like this drawing way, way more. 
And John Murph is asking, is the Akua ink dried already? No, the Akua ink, oh my God, it takes so long to dry, you guys. Like it, it's forever and ever and ever. So <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. And if you have a paper that's a little bit more absorbent, like this is just boring mixed media paper. It's not that exciting, but it can dry faster because on traditional printmaking paper like Reeves BFK, the printmaking paper, it's very raggy, like it's very absorbent. So it just like, it's like a sponge. It just eats up the ink, which is really cool. Starving Artist says there's a process called kitchen lithography. You can do it home with everyday items. Oh yes, yeah, somebody mentioned that to me. I've never done it before, but I'm very interested to see what that looks like because I know especially a lot of people are just stuck at home at this stage. So it's really hard to have that access. Guys, I would love for you to join me in the Art Prof Discord. Please hang out with me in the Art Alongs channel. The invite link to our Discord is in the YouTube video description below. Subscribe to the Art Prof YouTube channel so you can continue to grow and develop as an artist. And I wanna give a big thank you to our top Patreon supporters for helping us keep Art Prof 100% free and accessible. You guys give us all the resource, well, not all of them, but most of the resources that we need to keep Art Prof available. So everybody, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.